Imagine that this is your blood. What can you usually find in your blood? A few red blood cells here, maybe a few white blood cells there. That's about it, right? How would you feel if I tell you that every second there are millions of tiny time bombs floating through your arteries and veins? These tiny bombs form one of the most complex and important immune defense mechanisms of our body. It is so powerful that it can even contribute to the progression of Alzheimer's disease. Meet the complement system on this week's demystifying medicine. What is the complement system? The complement system is essentially made up of a large group of proteins. A protein is a cluster of molecules that performs various functions to keep your body alive. Each protein has a unique shape that determines its function, because shape determines what you can interact with and in what way. For example, a transport protein can only transport substances that can fit into its shape. Proteins can also change the shape of other proteins. Which can either activate, inactivate, or change their functions. The complement system is an extremely powerful component of our immune system. It is so powerful, in fact, that it is inactive in its default shape to avoid harming the body. There are three ways to activate the complement system, but for the sake of simplicity, let's say that a complement is activated when it bumps into a pathogen, such as bacteria and virus. Or when it bumps into an alien particle that doesn't belong in the body, the first complement to be activated is the C3 protein. Once activated, it splits into two parts, C3A and C3B. C3B is like a homing missile; it can seek out bacteria and viruses and embed itself in the membrane of these pathogens. Once it is embedded, C3B changes its shape, allowing other complement proteins to bind to it. In the end. It becomes a protein called C3 convertase. The C3 convertase main function is to activate more C3 proteins and form more convertases. This starts an amplification cascade that covers the pathogen with complement proteins. Why is this bad for the bacteria? Remember the other part of C3, the C3A protein. C3A is like a distress signal that wakes other parts of the immune system. Immune cells, for example, can follow the track of C3A to reach the site of the infection. In other words, C3A is like a trail of breadcrumbs that guide immune cells to the exact site of infection. One of the first cells to arrive are phagocytes, cells that eat and digest invading pathogens. Once the phagocyte finds the invaders, the C3 convertase acts as a sort of glue that makes it easy for the phagocyte to grab onto the invader and destroy it. But the complement system has another, more important function. They can kill pathogens without the help from immune cells. The C3 convertase can change shape again and become a new protein called the C5 convertase. The C5 convertase activates new complement proteins, which assemble to form a membrane attack complex. Rod-like complement proteins called C9 is driven into the pathogen's cell membrane, forming a hole. That allows the inside of the pathogen to spill out. Much like humans, the pathogens bleed to death. While the complement can safeguard the body against pathogen invasions, there is one area that it cannot reach: the brain. The brain is an immune privileged organ, meaning that it has its own private security and do not need complement. In fact, the brain has special cells to keep complement proteins and other substances out of its circulation. These cells form what we know as the blood-brain barrier. In certain neurological conditions, such as Alzheimer's disease, complement can play a huge role in disease progression. Alzheimer's is caused by a buildup of misfolded proteins in the brain, which interferes with the function of the neurons. These proteins also weaken the blood-brain barrier. Allowing complement proteins to seep into the brain. Once inside the brain, the complement system wreaks havoc on the neurons. Because complement isn't normally allowed inside the brain, brain cells have a hard time controlling these tiny bombs. In fact, some researchers have found that neurons can actually activate complement proteins, resulting in their own death. This is perhaps a perfect demonstration of the power and ruthlessness of the human immune system.